Hi, I'm Daniel and today I'd like to share a hack for manually scanning symmetrical parts with a fringe projection sensor. One of the major benefits of our ATUS and GOMSCAN1 sensors is that they are completely mobile. This means that you can freely position the sensor around your measuring object or position the measuring object itself any way you like. You could potentially scan a part while dangling it from the ceiling. It wouldn't make any difference. This, however, also poses a challenge. Unlike with tactile CMMs, ATUS and GOMSCAN1 measurements do not create consistent coordinate systems. The coordinate system of a scan is always determined by the angle of the first scan, like this. Later, an initial alignment to the CAD is often achieved via the function pre-alignment. But what if your parts are, let's say, rotationally symmetrical? Like this washer here. If there is no distinct geometry that can define the orientation of a part, multiple measured parts may end up aligned completely differently. This can mean that certain defects appear random even though they actually always occur in the same spot. You just don't realize it because of the different alignments. Now, there is a way to avoid this, and that is by using a fixed measurement background, like a rotation table. If you roughly mark a position and orientation to place your parts, you can use the reference points on the background to bring all of your meshes into roughly the same orientation before aligning them to the CAD. This will create much more consistent results. So, let me show you how it's done. First of all, I prepare my rotation table. My washer has this little number detail. It is too small to have a reliable impact on the later alignment, but I can still use it as a visual point of reference for placing all my parts in a similar manner. I place the first one on the rotation table and mark the position and orientation for future reference. This can be done many different ways. I use a bit of tape for this. I also create a little arrow to indicate where I want the small numbers to go. I want to show you the basic workflow, so to keep things simple, I've put reference point markers on my rotation table, but not on my part. Now I can start the first scan. My part was now digitized relative to the reference points on the rotation table. Those reference points will be of importance later, so let's export them to be able to reuse them in future projects. To do this, I select them and then go to File, Export, Geometries, Reference Points XML. I also export the mesh for better overview later on. Now, let's assume that it is the next day and I want to scan another washer of the same kind. The setup may have been changed. The sensor might be in a slightly different position and the rotation table may also have been moved. However, I can still place my part in roughly the same position due to the markings on my table. I can now open a new project and trigger the next measurement. The result is another digitized part with a very similar position relative to the reference points on the table. However, if I were to import the previous scan, the orientation of the meshes in 3D would be completely different. This is because the first measurement was started from a very different angle. Let's import a CAD of the part to see what the result would be if we aligned those two meshes the way they are to the CAD via a pre-alignment. As you can see, the surface comparison shows a defect in both parts, but the defect appears to be random. The question is, is the defect indeed random? If you take a look at the small numbers, you can clearly see that the alignment of the two meshes to the CAD is completely different. Without a consistent alignment, however, it's almost impossible to reliably spot recurring defects. 
how can we now get both meshes into a similar starting position so that the later pre-alignment to the CAD produces a comparable result? This is where the exported reference points from the first scan come into play. Let me jump back to the scanning project of the second part. I already finished the scan, so I can now load the exported reference points from the first scan into the second project via drag and drop. I'm choosing to import them as nominal data because I want them to represent the, so to say, ideal position of the reference points. I also have to tell the software that I don't need any measuring principle for the nominal points. I can now align the current set of reference points in green to the reference points from the first scan in blue. This can be done via the alignment best fit by reference points. What this does is move the reference points from the current scan, green, to the position of the reference points of the first scan, blue. And the best part, the mesh is moved accordingly. This way, we transform the second mesh into roughly the same orientation as the first one. I can now export a new version of the second mesh and import both the first and the second mesh into one project. Here they are, almost perfectly aligned. The remaining difference in orientation is only caused by the fact that I wasn't able to place the second washer at precisely the same position as the first one. This shouldn't be a problem though. Let's now again perform a pre-alignment for both washers. As you can see, the pre-alignments now show a very comparable result. It is now clearly visible that the defect occurs at the same position on both washers, which means that we could now go ahead and adjust the production accordingly. You see, if you want to scan symmetrical parts manually, it can be very helpful to use the same scanning background with the same reference points and a few markings. If you export the reference points from the first scan, you can later come back and use those to transform all following scans into roughly the same initial coordinate system. This leads to comparable results and ensures that you won't miss any problems with your production. Speaking of missing things, if you subscribe to this channel, you can make sure that you won't miss any future hacks or other helpful videos. See you next time.